Hello, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Chaos Wolf here, and welcome back to the Elite Dangerous Beta servers. Now, I thought my job was pretty much done with uh, taking a look at the new ships for 1.3, but uh, Frontier, it seems, has uh, taken this complacency of mine and gone, nope. Here you go, here's another ship to review, and we've also made some fixes to the Courier again. So, I am here taking a look at the new version of the Diamondback. We now have two versions that are available in uh, 1.3. The Diamondback Scout, which is the, uh, the original version that we had, that was originally known simply as the Diamondback. And we now have this as well, the Diamondback Explorer. And I've got to say, Commander Ducky is extremely happy that its uh, default colour scheme is E Ducky Yellow. What's the difference between the, uh, the Diamondback Scout and the Diamondback Explorer? Well, we'll go and have a look at that just now. Let's go and see. First of all, what's different about the stock Diamondback Scout? Well, as we can see, it has a higher top speed and higher boost speed to what the, uh, the Diamondback... Explorer has. Top speed here is 242 and boost speed is 316. Go back over. 283 and 280, uh, 384. So it's really quite a bit faster is the original. But that would probably uh, make sense considering that the whole mass of the Explorer is nearly 300 and the whole mass of this one is almost half of what the Explorer's uh, mass is. So the, the Explorer is, even though it's the same size of ship, it is a lot heavier. The standard Scout comes with, well, the Diamondback Scout comes with a standard jump range of uh, 11.35 light years. The Diamondback Explorer comes with a standard jump range of 14.15 fully laden uh, at the moment, because it comes with uh, some cargo racks, would be 13.7. Shields, 115 on the Explorer, still 93 on the Scout. So the Scout is faster but has lower shields and is lighter. And the Diamondback Explorer has better shields. And uh, let's see what the armor is, 217 or 270. The Explorer actually has better armor. So that's interesting. Well, that's not the, the only difference as well. Hard points, as we saw on the Diamondback Scout, we have two small hard points, two medium hard points. On the Explorer, we have two medium and one large, so we've lost the two small and we've gained a large hard point instead. But not only that, the Diamondback Explorer has a grand total of five internal compartments, two size four, two size three, and one size two. The, uh, the Diamondback Scout only has three, uh, sorry, four internal compartments. So it has three size three and one size two. So the Diamondback Explorer has one more internal compartment and it is, uh, and they are mainly larger. We have, because uh, here we have two size threes and one size two. Here we have uh, one size two, two size three, and two size four internal compartments. So you have a lot more uh, internal capacity for the Diamondback Explorer. So this could potentially make a nice little smuggling ship or even a better pirate ship than the uh, the Diamondback Scout. The Diamondback Scout seems to be geared a lot more towards long-range uh, combat than the Diamondback Explorer. The Diamondback Explorer can do combat, I it, but it's not quite as manoeuvrable. Let's just double check this. So maneuverability here is five out of ten. Back to the scout. That yeah, there we go. Eight out of ten. So there we go. You can quite clearly see there's a massive, massive difference between the two maneuverabilities, and I have noticed this because I have gone to attempt to throw the Diamondback Explorer around a little bit, uh, set for combat. And it just felt so much more sluggish than the Diamondback Scout. Yes, we can get a lot more jump range out of it. And it has a lot more internal compartments and a lot better armor and shields. But we are paying for that in maneuverability. But next thing what we want to do is we actually want to have a look around the cockpit of this ship. Now, we have pretty much looked around the Diamondback Scout already. 
But the main difference in the cockpit here is instead of actually having the uh, blue displays that we're used to, uh, everything is yellow in here. We even have a yellow internal paint job. So we've got the ha yellow handles, yellow for the douse, that the, uh, the info lights up there are yellow rather than blue. So basically it's just a pellet swap inside here. So that's really the only real difference. So I'm not going to muse on it too much. What I'm going to do now is we're going to go have a look in the outfitting department. And as we can see there, there is the large uh, hardpoint actually on the bottom of the ship. Now I am a bit concerned that this does seem to be a very, very uh, kind of uh, quick response to the backlash that everyone gave the Diamondback the original Diamondback, which became the Diamondback Scout. Because it was originally built as a combat explorer, but only being able to go up to 28 light years maximum without even any weapons, that was uh, certainly not what we were expecting. And um, because the community backlashed so much, I imagine that's why this ship is now actually available in the game, that the Diamondback has now been split into two distinct models. Now the reason I imagine this to be really true is if we go and have a look at this class descending. Uh, I, I can't even put anything on here as yet because we don't have enough uh, thruster capacity. So let's put the thrusters up to class A just for this for the moment. We'll go back to the hard points so we can actually put the, uh, the large weapons on there because you can't do that originally. Now this is why I'm thinking this was a little bit of a uh, hastily put together uh, project. Because let's have a look at this. Oh look, it's already clipping the floor a little bit. There we go. We have now completely clipped into the floor with a turret. So you can tell that this wasn't thought through as well as it could have been. Uh, giving it a, la uh, a large hard point on the bottom, not the best in my idea, in my idea, at least, at least visually. But it's not a big, big issue. It's just something that bugs me uh, in kind of an OCD fashion. But either way, let's actually just go and have a quick look at the uh, internal compartments here. Because we have already seen that we've got two medium and one large hardpoint on this ship. It does make this ship a very different beast to its uh, sister ship, the Diamondback Scout. But uh, the power plant is still a uh, class 4, thrusters are still class 4, I think they were still class 4 in the previous one. The main thing that's changed here is the frameshift drive is now a class 5 internal rather than a class 4. So if we max this out, let's go class descending. There we go, 30 light years jump range straight off the bat doing nothing to it but giving it the best frameshift drive. And I must say that this is a massive improvement, so that this ship is actually a very, very, very viable uh, exploration ship. You can actually get this quite comfortably to jump further than the ASP at less of a cost to your ship, uh, to your overall performance. So I do think that this is actually going to be one of, if not the, exploration ship of choice from 1.3 and onward because not only can we actually get a, a class 5 jump drive we've also got two class 4 internals because where it is in the original Diamondback Scout we only had a maximum of class 3 we had three class 3 and one class 2 so the amount of internal space was drastically smaller but now, because it comes with, as standard, a uh, class 4 shield generator, which is why the shields are better. But what we can do is move that down to the class 3 slot, back to how it would be. And then we can actually fit, uh, module type, where are we? We can actually fit a class 4 fuel scoop. So this is absolutely bloody awesome. So we can, you can actually... Um, scoop 340 uh, kilos of fuel per second because it's nice that we actually get this scoop rate now because originally what we had was 180 tons uh, uh, sorry, one, uh, 0 0.18 tons a second which is what the maximum was on the Diamondback Scout which was really not cutting it 
if you want an explorer, you really want to have a much higher rate of uh, fuel scooping potential. So that is absolutely bloody awesome. Not only that, but we have a second one, so what we a second class four. So what we can actually do is then go and forget the fuel scoops. We've already looked at that. Where are we? Go past the bloody prospectors, past all those. There we go. Class 4A um, auto field maintenance units. And still have space internally for the for the shield generator. So with the Diamondback Explorer, we are losing no functionality. We have the auto field maintenance. We have the shield generator. We have the awesome fuel scoop. So there's really no downside to actually making this into an absolutely amazing uh, exploration ship. And I am really looking forward to giving this a go. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is breaking away from tradition in this particular ship. Because I can't show this ship uh, uh, basically, better set up basically for combat uh, as it is without upgrading any of the internal compartments. Because you, we literally cannot carry a large weapon on this ship, or even medium weapons on this ship, or some medium weapons anyway, apart from a mining laser. Wow, I could fit a medium mining laser, everything else has to be small in the large port, uh, the large hard point even, for the simple fact that uh, this ship doesn't have the thruster capacity to actually be able to move the ship if we put one of these on there, because we will be adding like eight tons of mass to the ship and the ship just can't, the ship's thrusters just cannot uh, handle that. So what I'm going to be doing is I am going to have to take a look at this ship with a D4 thrusters just so I can actually go and mount a large weapon to this ship. So back to class descending. And what we're going to do is we're going to go put a gimbaled pulse laser on here. There it be. So I'm feeling slightly reminiscent of the Vulture at the moment with one large hardpoint. But the nice thing is, is we can actually go for two mediums. There we go. We can actually go for two medium multi-cannons. Which, in a way, which actually do more damage, uh, I imagine, than a large uh, cannon would do. Because not only are these... Uh, firing more often and the fact that going up from a medium to a large weapon you're only gaining about 50% uh, overall damage so having two of these means we're going up 100% so we've got about 50% more damage than a large uh, hard point weapon with two mediums not only that but these are easier to hit a large cannon is actually uh, harder to aim with but what we could even do we could have just set these to medium pulse lasers and see how that actually works. So I'm curious to see how the power draw actually works for this ship. So there we go. We have two medium and one large pulse laser. All gimbaled. So I'm curious to see how this would actually work. I may end up having to set these uh, two mediums onto a second uh, fire group. Or even have them as a the primary and have to set this one as the secondary fire group. I don't know. We'll have to see how that works. Okay, so we are now actually outside of the uh, Dalton Gateway, and what I'm going to do is have a look at, as always, the acceleration, deceleration, and how easy this thing is to turn. So, first of all, let's have a look. Now, bear in mind, we have actually upgraded these thrusters one grade. But this already feels a little bit slower to accelerate than the Diamondback Scout does on stock engines. So let's slow down now. And again, it just feels like it accelerates and decelerates a little slower. But let's go again, do a boost acceleration. So that's not bad. But then again, we don't expect it to be uh, bad. But let's try a... Uh, bringing ourselves down to combat uh, turn speed so we get the most maneuverability out of the ship. And let's see, well, we seem to have a fairly okay turning radius, but let's try that at uh, boost turning. 
Yeah, the boost turn on this thing doesn't seem as nice as it does on the standard Diamondback Scout. So yes, this does seem a little bit more uh, sluggish, let's say. But being 5 out of 10 on um, maneuverability does kind of... You can, you can feel that. Okay, we seem to have found ourselves a wanted sidewinder. So let's put the power into weapons and let's see how this goes. Now at the moment, I am on the basic power distributor. And yeah, I'm already feeling it's a bit more awkward actually trying to keep up with this ship here. Even on the D thrusters. So let's slow down, bring it around. So yeah, I'm already having enough more trouble than I would in the scout actually keeping track of this guy. So let's take a look at him and fire all the weapons on him at the same time. And you can just see our power distributor draining horrendously there. Right, let's see if this guy is actually wanted. I hope he is. There we go. Yes, he is. So let's take these guys out. So power into weapons and let's see how the, the large gimbal actually works and how that actually... So firing that one by itself actually uh, doesn't take up as much capacitor power as the two mediums. I'll just look at that taking shields away. But I am having my shields taken down in turn. So let's try and quickly take this guy down as fast as possible. Right, come on. Oh, that's why. It's another Diamondback Explorer. Well, that's been a, it's been a while since that's happened to me. I somehow don't think I'm going to be getting out of this one alive. Cabin pressure alert. Target shield offline. There we go. It, we've got behind it, so we may even actually survive this. Though I am somehow doubting it. <laughs> Let's stay behind him. He's dropping chaff. But that doesn't bother me. I'm just happy to let my uh, capacitors recharge. Cabin pressure alert. Come on, we can get back on him. We can do this even though I'm on 1% hull. Or somehow I don't think I'm going to survive. If I do, this is going to be a miracle. Target shield online. Not for long, they're not. There we go, I'm gone. <laughs> well, that's a first. <laughs> that's the first time that's happened. But as you can see, this ship is a little bit more sluggish. And I was actually getting fired upon by another Diamondback Explorer, which explains why my shields got taken out so quickly. But uh, I've got to say that I, out of the Explorer and the Scout, I do actually prefer the Scout for combat. Uh, not just because, well, I'll be honest, I probably could have done better with my choice of weapons there. Had I chosen two medium multi-cans, I probably would have finished that fight a lot sooner. But I'm not too worried. That was just a little experiment because I wanted to see how fast the capacitor drained having full energy weapons. But anyway, uh, what I want to do now is have a look at how this ship would actually look fully set out for exploration. And in true Blue Peter style, here is one I made earlier. So here we have my Diamondback Explorer set up for jump range. 
I have the two the standard two heatsink launchers. I could add more in here, but I would actually be just hurting my jump range even more. Because currently this is point uh zero six of a light year further jump range uh than I had on my Explorer Asp that I had when I went out exploring. Because that ship had thirty three point zero six light year jump range. This one's got thirty three point one two, which is a better jump range. The only thing I'm missing is two uh, heatsink launchers, and I never really used the heatsink launchers all that much. But going back to have a look at the internals, uh, we've got the basic alloys, everything D apart from the frame shift drive, which is in class 5A. We've got a 4A fuel scoop, 4A auto field maintenance, D3 shields, which is the smallest we can go. We can't go to D2 because they just would not fit this ship. And our standard detail surface scanner and advanced discovery scanner. Now, this is the absolute high end, uh, if money is no object, uh, setup for the ship that I would recommend going for. But what you can do is you can actually use this ship pretty much stock to do shorter uh, exploration trips because it does have a 14 light year jump range. But one thing I do want to point out is the fuel tank is actually capacity 32, which is twice the size of the fuel tank on the Diamondback Scout. Now, if I were to go and set this down to a fuel tank of size 16, we would get a 34.61 light year jump range. Uh, I'm not comfortable though with having only a 16 ton fuel tank, so I'm going to stick with the 32. Yes, I'm losing about one and a half light years of jump range, but I don't really care. I do much prefer having the greater fuel capacity so I can go through more dead stars and not have to stress. So this is how I am planning to have this ship. I mean, we could even drop out the... Uh, the autofill maintenance units if you don't want to do that and if you are really worried about uh, running out of fuel Here we go an extra fuel tank. We could throw in an extra 8 ton fuel tank It would take us up to 40 tons of maximum fuel But it would drop our jump range again down to 32.42 light years I mean that's not a big hit for having an extra 8 tons of fuel in your ship But let's actually double check that so that be fully laden yeah let's let's actually put that in there exit out of here and let's actually refuel so then go back into the outfitting yeah 32.42 light years so that is not a massive hit for having an extra eight tons of uh, fuel to take with you but that does mean that we cannot actually uh, repair any of our internal modules if they get damaged by heat damage so again, like I said, I would much prefer to take the autofill maintenance unit over additional fuel capacity. Because this ship already has twice the amount of fuel capacity as the Diamondback Scout would have. But the next thing I wanted to show you guys quickly is the Diamondback Explorer that I have ready set up. And here we go, here is another ship that I made earlier. Now, what this is, is the absolute pinnacle of what I... Th well, not the absolute pinnacle. It is almost the absolute pinnacle of what this ship can be combat-wise. I have got one gimbaled burst laser underneath because I think that uh, the beam laser may be a little bit um, unnecessary. Not only that, but it, anno it does annoy me how it clips through the floor. So, that's just me personally. You can ha quite happily go for a gimbaled... Uh, pull a uh, gimbal beam laser if you wish, but I've also gone for two multi cannons as well So we can see how this ship actually works. We've got the kill warrant scanner chaff launcher and Two small shield boosters. I mean you can swap these out for something else. You could quite easily go for a cargo scanner and use this as a Combat uh, as a pirate ship So now let's have a look at the uh, internal slots. I have upgraded to military composites. I mean we can quite easily equip either the mirrored or the reactive we're not going to be losing anything, so, but I just like to go for the military grade because I'm not losing any protection anywhere. Uh, we've got the best power plant, so again, it is still the 15.6 maximum power draw. Thrusters are at uh, A4. Frameshift drives the A5. D3 life support and sensors because I don't see the point of making them any bigger, any better. The, the sensors, 
you, we could make them to the A if we so wanted, but that's going to take me over my power draw even more than I already am. I have this dealt with with um, having my cargo hatch and my frame shift drive and all, so on set to priority group 2. So when I've got my weapons out, I can't use my cargo hatch. Shield generators, A4. So again, we're going to have better shields than we would in the Diamondback Scout. Got a B4 shield bank. So again, that's, that's again better than the Scout. Got an A3 fuel scoop. So I think that's pretty much the same as the scouts because their scout had two class uh, three class threes and one class two and we've also got the flame frame shift drive interdictor here but we've also got eight tons of cargo capacity so like i said previously you could actually just have a cargo scanner and you could quite easily use this as a pirate ship if you wanted to fin uh, finagle around with the internal compartments because you could quite easily drop the fuel scoop you could quite easily drop the uh, shield cell bank and that would give you a roughly about 32 tons of internal space that you could have with the best shield generator and a frame shift drive interdictor so this ship could make a quite a nice pirate ship it's fast it's not quite as maneuverable as the slightly more combat oriented uh, scout but it can still do quite a lot better as a pirate ship than the the scout variant but even so, with the setup that I have, we have a 26 light year jump range. So we still have a very good jump range and still be completely maxed out for combat. Now actually, what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we are going to go and launch. And we're going to go and see how the maxed out version of this ship actually does in a small amount of combat. Because I know you guys have been wanting to see this in my preview videos. So let's go and give this a go for a little bit and see how this works. Now I can already see that this ship has got much better maneuverability now that we have actually upgraded the, uh, the ship even more. But let's swap to the actual combat thing because I'm not bothered. There we go. So let's actually stop ripping on this guy. Now, as you can see, we are having a lot more issues actually trying to keep this guy in our field of view. So we're having to go reversed to actually get our guns to bear on the guy. Well, let's close the distance and take him out. Well, there we go. That was so much easier. But then again, we didn't. We also didn't have a uh, down by another diamond back explorer actually uh, on our ass whilst we were trying to take the other one out. Now let's see how this guy does if he is wanted, and he is. So there we go. He didn't last very long at all. But as you can see, when you fully upgraded, this ship can be an absolute beast in combat. Now, I would be tempted to actually take missile launchers on this ship just to make it a bit more of uh, a gunboat. But I think uh, multi-cannons are probably the best way to go on this ship. But let's go and have a look, see if we can find a little bit more combat. Now, we have found some more ships, but whether they are wanted is another issue. But yes, they are. I mean, that wasn't even fair. That that was like kicking puppies. Do you have authorization to be inside the docking bay? Remember, loitering is a violation. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. Right, so the question that I usually answer at the moment is uh, what do I think of this particular ship? And the short answer of that one is I actually kind of like this ship. I like it, I really like it for its exploration potential. I think that is absolutely amazing and I'm really looking forward to actually uh, going out on an exploration trip in this ship. 
So as soon as 1.3 uh, comes out, I think I might struggle to contain myself from going out and doing some exploration. Now, how do I think about this in a combat role? I think this is a very different ship. Now, I do think that the Dimeback Scout and the Dimeback Explorer actually fill different combat roles. The Dimeback Scout is a much faster, much lighter, much more agile ship, and I much prefer the grouping of its hardpoints. Uh, and the placement of the hard points, because I do find that it makes tracking the your target ship that much easier. And with the addition of it being so much more nimble, I think that the Diamondback Scout is a much better combat ship. The Diamondback Explorer, on the other hand, has a much has a large hard point rather than too small, and it has two medium hard points as well so it fills a very different role in combat it is not as nimble it is not as fast it does have better shields and it also does have uh, more hull armor but overall i do think that the diamondback uh, scout will be the better of the two for pure combat uh, performance i do think that the Diamondback Explorer is going to be much more widely used combat-wise for piracy. And let's not forget the differences in the two ships in the regards of um, jump range and exploration. Now, this is where the Diamondback Explorer really comes into its own. This ship seems to be dedicated almost solely towards doing exploration. Now, I do think that if you cut down on the modules on your ASP, you will be able to get a longer jump range than you can out of the Diamondback Explorer, though I am not 100% convinced about that. I think you still may be able to get better jump range out of the Diamondback Explorer, though you will be sacrificing a lot of functionality of your ship. I do prefer to play it safe and keep my jump range to around about 33.12 light year jump range. I could go for better, but I like the security that the auto field maintenance and and the heatsink launches actually provide me. Uh, like I said, I could drop down the fuel tank, but I do again prefer the security of having a larger fuel tank. But either way, I will be picking myself up one of these ships specifically to be going out and doing exploration. I think this is a much more appealing ship to be flying around in with the for exploration the main downside though is there is a little bit less visibility from your cockpit but that's something i can quite happily uh, live without now there is one more thing that the asp has over the uh, diamondback explorer and that is the size of internal modules the asp can actually fit up to a class 6 fuel scoop whereas the diamondback explorer can only fit up to a class 4 now it seems that the Diamondback can jump further but scoops slower and the Asp jumps not as far but scoops way faster. So it's a bit of a uh, balancing act which we would actually prefer to have yourself. But anyway guys, I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, please do hit that uh, like button, it really does help this channel out. And if you haven't already, please do hit that big subscribe button to join the Wolfpack. You'll get notifications from whenever I release new videos. And uh, also, check underneath my uh, subscribe button. You will see links to my, all my affiliated YouTube channels. Please do check out their channels. They really do work hard on their videos and their channels. And anyway, guys, until next time, keep flying and stay shiny.